Hey everyone, and welcome to the Casual Watch View channel. Today, we are going to take a look at the new Phoebus Proteus. And I think this could be one of the quirkiest and most well executed Phoebus watches yet. Proteus was a Greek god, protector of the seas, rivers, and other bodies of water. He's referred to in Greek mythology as the old man of the sea. That makes it a very fitting name for this new watch as it looks both modern and vintage at the same time. Phoebus continue their excellent non-homage designs and throw the watch design rulebook out of the window with this one. This isn't a company like so many others touting that they are going to disrupt the Swiss watch industry. This is a company trying to create its own identity for a watch industry they are proud to say is both designed, manufactured, and based in Hong Kong. Phoebus very existence shows that there's still room for fresh and innovative designs in an industry that keeps thumbing through the pages of old watch catalogs for inspiration. This watch shows there is a place for unique designs at affordable prices. This one is priced at only $299, something that should have some of the larger brands naming no names, holding their heads in shame in my opinion. The value prop here, spec versus price and build quality is excellent as with most Phoebus watches I've reviewed. The Proteus is an existing line. What's new with this watch is the heavy amount of pre-aging on the watch dial and case. I've never been a fan of this on other watches, but there's something about the way they've executed this that I really like. The case measures in at 42 millimeters with a 49 millimeter lug to lug and a 13 millimeter thickness. It has been pre-aged to look like a heavily tarnished metal or aged steel plating as Phoebus referred to it as on their website. They've even gone to the extent of pre-aging the crown and case back. This is the kind of attention to detail that they could easily got away with leaving, especially the case back, but they've gone the extra mile. The only shame is we don't get treated to a bracelet with the same finishing, although that may have been too much of a good thing, as the aging on the blue leather strap really adds to the look, I think. And for anyone that winces at the sight of a dive watch on a leather strap, they also include a rubber strap that although isn't pre-aged itself, you can add the buckle from the leather one that has been aged. I would encourage you to check out the leather first before swapping it out because they've done an excellent job here. It's surprising that the quality of a leather strap needs to be specifically mentioned in a watch review, but it's rare that you get a decent leather strap on a sub thousand dollar watch. It's worth giving Phoebus a pat on the back for this one. Credit where credit's due after all. The case itself follows a very geometric design and does have a substantial feel to it. This is a larger 42 millimeter watch. Here you can see on my 7.2 inch wrist. The shorter lug design makes for a very comfortable wear that offsets the weight of this watch, here coming in at 120 grams. The short lugs are again very geometric in design and the only trade-off for having shorter lugs is that some of the thicker Zulu straps you'd probably struggle to get on without removing the pins, but you could easily add a Tropic or even a mesh strap to it if you could find one that contrasted the case well. The case is finished with a very well executed crown, easy to grip, easy to screw down and nicely signed with the increasingly more iconic King Octopus logo. The overall watch has a 300 meter water resistant resistance, so you're covered for most water-based activities and some that you definitely can't do, like test this watch to its full depth rating. In previous Phoebus reviews, I've given them a hard time for the bezel action. They usually line up very nicely and work well, but they never feel as good as I know they could make it. Well, I'm not gonna be as so bold as to say that they watch all of my reviews, but this bezel is night and day compared to the one on the last one I reviewed. It is smooth with a satisfying click and has a beautifully aged ceramic insert. They have gone to the extent of pre-aging the painted numbers and brushed out any shine as if the ceramic insert has been on a watch for 30 years. On the metal part, it also has that same aged steel plating like the rest of the case. For a watch that has such a heavy amount of theming to it, I'm sure it's going to divide opinion before you cast judgment either way, I want to show you one of the secrets of this watch that blew me away when I first saw it. This watch probably has one of the most impressive loom shots going. A generous application of BGW9 
treats us to a light show in the dark. I was not expecting that at all, honestly. It just looks cool. The dial is framed behind a double dome sapphire crystal with three layers of AR coating. The advantage of a double dome sapphire crystal is it offers slight magnification of the dial without distorting when viewed from different angles. This is something you just don't typically see on $300 watches and probably the reason why FIBA sell out of most of their watch models quite quickly on the website. The dial itself is fantastic, like most modern Phoebus watches, but this one is made up of three different layers, and each one has its own pre-aged treatment. The outer ring here is a muted white, and as you saw before, is fully loomed. I'm glad they didn't use the same aged loom look on that is used on the hands, applied indices, and bezel. That would have been too over the top. The indices are applied and then sandblasted to take away any of the silver shine. This really complements the hands. The hands are the best yet for from Phoebus. In the past, I have pointed out that I'm no massive fan of the syringe hands that have become part of Phoebus's design language. These ones are perfect for my taste. Nicely aged sword hands with a lovely bevel down the center, like a 40 year old Grand Seiko that's been exposed to too many of the elements. A big thumbs up for the aged loom that isn't all the way towards the brown section of the Pantone color chart. The dial itself is a gorgeous grain texture to it and honestly really brings the whole look of the watch together. It's matte and does not change in the light. This gives the dial a real depth. So you've heard me talk about how much I like the dial. So what else do I think could there be room for improvement on? Well, honestly, the only thing I can really think of was the date wheel and the logo. The date wheel maybe could have benefited slightly from aging as well. Maybe a, a darkish yellow to complement the hands. Also, the logo could have been slightly aged as well, maybe even slightly scratched off as if it had been worn away over time. But that's honestly me being nitpicky and I couldn't think of anything else really. The second hand itself looks really cool, but it may confuse some more of the longer time watch collectors. This is because a Thunderbolt second hand usually denotes a watch that has a very high anti-magnetic rating or has been specifically designed to be anti-magnetic. Although here I'm sure it ties in with Greek mythology and is a nod to the watch his namesake. The watch runs the NH35A movement like most of Phoebus's watches. This is a workhorse TMI movement in the Seiko family of movements. Not only should you get reliability from it, but any watchmaker can work on this type of movement. And of course, Phoebus offer their own generous two year warranty. This is a really good looking watch. You've got multiple colorways, but I was really taken by this blue grainy finish. If you like the pre-aged look, Phoebus have gone all the way in with this theming, but not over the top. My first thought when I saw this watch was it looked like the original Iron Man film where Tony Stark makes the first Iron Man suit literally out of iron. The watch would have worked very well well on his arm whilst he was wearing that Mark I suit, no problems. The theming is great. The only thing that breaks the theming, I would say, is the box. It comes in the standard Phoebus box that unfortunately is suited more to a sports aftershave, I would say. For this watch, you could have easily got away with a tatty cardboard box or maybe encased it in sand like one of those archaeological science toys where you have to dig the fossil out. That would have really suited this watch perfectly. Of course, just joking on that one. This watch, for sure, you never have to worry about scratching. The more you scratch it, the more dings you get in, the better looking this watch is going to be over time. So a big thanks to Phoebus for sending me this watch in for review. If you want to check it out yourself, there is an affiliate link in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more watch reviews and let me know if you do subscribe so I can say hi in the comments. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time on the Casual Watch Review channel. Thanks guys. Bye.